Hello, my name is Jocelyn, I am 31 years old and I have been living the life I have always dreamed of. My husband and I were happily settled in our beautiful dream house, a place we had worked hard to own since our wedding two years ago. It was a spacious and stunning home, complete with a big garden and a refreshing pool. We had saved diligently for years to make this dream a reality and we both had thriving careers to thank for it, me as a lawyer and him as a doctor. Life was perfect until the day his parents moved in with us. At first it seemed like a temporary arrangement, a chance for them to get back on their feet after facing some financial setbacks. My husband, being the caring son that he was, couldn't turn them away in their time of need. We agreed to welcome them into our home, hoping it would only be for a short while. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, it became evident that this temporary situation wasn't going to end any time soon. His parents seemed to have grown comfortable in our house, making themselves at home quite literally. They started taking control over the house, imposing their own rules and preferences. And one day they did something horrible to show me that I do not belong in this place. And this story is about how I exposed them in front of their son. My in-laws showed up at our house in the middle of the night, telling me that they had lost their home and their savings in a scam, and they had nowhere else to go. My husband offered to let them stay with us until they got back on their feet. Uh, Jocelyn, Abel, we need to talk. Something terrible has happened. We've lost our home and all our savings in a scam. We have nowhere else to go, darling. We're left with nothing. Our hearts ache, but we didn't know who else to turn to. Mom, Dad, you don't have to worry. We'll find a way to help you through this. Stay with us until you can get back on your feet. We'll face this together. Kids, we can't thank you enough for your kindness. We promise we'll find a way to repay you for this. We're family, and family stands by each other. Don't worry about repayment, Mr. Johnson. Our priority is to help you rebuild your lives. Jocelyn, dear, thank you. We'll do everything we can to get back on our feet as soon as possible. Before my in-laws moved into our house, I had decided to take a short break from work. Little did I know that they would misinterpret my temporary absence as being jobless. Just four days after their arrival, my mother-in-law approached me with a well-meaning but misguided concern. I was taken aback by her straightforward question, not expecting such a conversation so soon after their arrival. Nevertheless, I composed myself and responded politely, but my mother-in-law seemed to be unconvinced with that answer. Why don't you go to work? Do you depend entirely on Abel for financial support? Oh no, it's not that I'm jobless. I took a few days off from work to relax and recharge. I plan on returning soon. Well, dear, it might be a little burdening for Abel if you don't handle your expenses. You should consider being financially independent. I appreciate your concern, Esther, but please rest assured, I'm not entirely dependent on Abel for my expenses. I have my income and contribute to our household finances. This break is simply a way for me to take care of myself and recharge. Once I'm back at work, things will go back to normal. All right, dear. I just wanted to make sure everything is all right. You know we care about both of you. Thank you, Esther. I understand your worry, and I truly appreciate your concern for our well-being, but I assure you, everything is fine. I'll be back to work soon, and we'll continue managing our expenses as we always have. After that conversation, things between my in-laws and me took a turn for the worst. Whenever I mustered up the courage to approach Abel for financial assistance, I couldn't help but notice disapproving frowns and annoyed expressions on the faces of my in-laws. It seemed as though they had formed a negative opinion of me. One day as I was passing by the living room, I overheard a conversation between my father-in-law and mother-in-law. I just don't understand why she refuses to go to work. She's been jobless for weeks now. It's as if she's relying solely on Abel's wealth to fund her shopping sprees. I talked to her about the same. She says she handles all the expenses by herself, but I see her asking for money from Abel every time. I always had my doubts about her, dear. She must think we're fools believing that she can take advantage of Abel's hard-earned money without lifting a finger herself. I think we must either talk to Abel or Jocelyn directly. I am not in support of this decision of theirs. My heart sank upon hearing their misguided assumptions about me. They had painted me as a lazy gold digger, someone who squandered Abel's wealth on frivolous shopping instead of contributing to the household. I'd always dreamt of a harmonious family life after marrying Abel. I didn't know that my in-laws had a different idea of how things should be. Every day I found myself at the beck and call of my in-laws, who seemed to relish in bossing me around. 
They treated me as if I were some kind of gold digger, assuming that I depended solely on their son for everything. Their behaviour had created a toxic dynamic within the household, leaving me feeling like a servant rather than a valued family member. It was especially apparent during mealtimes. While I tirelessly prepared all the meals, my mother-in-law and father-in-law would simply sit and relax, seemingly oblivious to my efforts. They expected me to cater to their every need, even going so far as to ask for a glass of water. It was as if they believed my purpose in the house was solely to serve them. Sometimes she'd tell me, Jocelyn, dear, can you put mine and Charlie's clothes into the laundry? I'm very tired. Sure, I'll do it. Both of them would ask me to hand over a glass of water over seven to eight times a day. The house looked like a complete mess, and even the maid was tired of their behaviour. She'd have to clean the floors a lot of times because my in-laws would keep on spilling something. And I don't want to get started on the noises. They'd turn on the TV and watch variety shows at full volume, and that gave me a lot of headaches. Every time I'd sit in front of my laptop to check documents and case papers, my mother-in-law would ask me to get her something. Like this one time. Jocelyn, dear, I have a little fever. Can you please get me some medicines? Esther, you can log into an online pharmacy app. They'll deliver in half an hour, and that's exactly how much it'd take me to bring them myself. That ask for an extra cost. You're over here doing nothing, just scrolling through your laptop. Why can't you get me my medicines? You are seriously so lazy. Esther, I'm over here checking some important documents. You and Charlie are the lazy people here. How dare you talk to me like that? I am your mother-in-law and my son is the one who's paying for you. You should listen to everything I say. I hope you're not forgetting that your son is also my husband and we built this home together. He has abided to pay for me. Pay for you while you sit here and relax? I can say the same for you. Oh my God, you are so disrespectful and ungrateful. The once harmonious atmosphere began to fray at the edges. Their presence brought tension and our once happy home felt suffocated. Their constant interference and unsolicited advice started to create a rift between my husband and me. I didn't know whom to talk to, so I turned to my best friend, Diane, thinking that she might give me some valuable advice. A few weeks ago, my in-laws moved into our home temporarily because they had lost their house and savings in a scam. You won't believe it, but it turned out to be an absolute nightmare. What did they exactly do? Well, let me tell you about my in-laws. They are the worst I've ever encountered. They are so rude and ungrateful. It is unbearable. They treated me like a servant and a stranger, constantly bossing me around and criticizing everything I did. Feels like they think they own the house and everything in it. That sounds awful. How do they behave? They're demanding and disrespectful, always expecting things to be done their way. They have no regard for our belongings or resources, using them carelessly and wasting everything. Our house is constantly noisy messy and filled with unnecessary trouble caused by them that must be incredibly frustrating to deal with you have no idea it's like living in a constant state of chaos and stress their behavior makes me feel devalued and unappreciated i can't believe how they could treat someone like that especially their family member i'm so sorry you had to go through that did you ever confront them about their behavior i tried to address the issues but it only made things worse since I'm on a break from work right now, they think I am jobless and depend on Abel for everything. I have my savings, and Abel is my husband. Of course I'd ask him for money. He married me. <laughs> they constantly disrespect me. My dream home is becoming a nightmare for me. See, Jocelyn? Why don't you talk to Abel about it? He should understand that his parents are in the wrong this time. Yes, I think so. I should talk to him. One evening as we sat in the living room, I gathered the courage to speak my mind. Honey, don't you think it's time your parents found their place? It's been months and I miss having our space to ourselves. I know, but they're still not financially stable. I, I can't just ask them to leave. I'm not saying we should abandon them, but we deserve our space too. This was our dream house, remember? It's just about a few days. They'll leave soon. As the days passed, my frustration grew. The once joyful conversations at the dinner table turned into tense silences. My husband's attention shifted and it felt like I was slowly losing him to his parents' demands. Then one day, while my husband was at work, his parents requested a serious conversation with me. They asked me to sit down, their faces stern and disapproving. It was a conversation I never anticipated. Listen, we need to talk. We've reached a decision and we believe it's time for you to leave. 
Yes, we don't like you or trust you. We feel like you're just using our son for his money. You're jobless and we believe you're a gold digger. But, but that's not true. I love your son genuinely. I never married him for his money. I married him because I love him. We don't see it that way. We think you're a bad influence on him. You're not good enough for him and he deserves better. We want you out of his life and out of our house. Consider this your one week notice. Um, can we talk about this? There's nothing to talk about. We've made our decision. But why? I don't understand. I love your son and I thought we had a good relationship. And I remember I made it clear that I am not jobless. This is a break that I took to focus on my life. You may love him, but we don't believe you truly care for him. You're just after his money. And what kind of job allows you to take a month off? That's not true. I married him because I love him, not for his money. He was just a student when we first met. Oh, come on. We know your type. You saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. No, you're wrong. I've always supported him and his dreams. I never asked him for anything material because I'm capable of getting that for myself. And if you are forgetting, he is my husband and I do have some rights on him. We don't believe you. You're just trying to manipulate him into thinking you're a good person. That's not fair. I've been nothing but kind and respectful to both of you. You may act nice, but we see through your act. You're a bad influence on him, and we won't stand for it. Can't we find a way to work things out? I don't want to lose my marriage. It's too late for that. We've already made arrangements for you to leave in a week. A week? That's not enough time. Please reconsider. No, our decision is final. You have one week to pack your things and leave. I can't believe you're doing this to me. I never thought you would treat me this way. It's for the best. You're not right for our son and we won't allow you to ruin his life. You can't control our lives like this. We're adults and we can make our own decisions. We know what's best for him and he will thank us one day. Well, I won't leave without a fight. I love him and I won't let you tear us apart. We'll see about that, but mark our words, you are not welcome here anymore. I won't lie, I was enjoying the drama, but this was taking a weird turn. I couldn't help but laugh because they thought I was jobless. The expressions on their faces clearly showed that they think I have gone crazy. <sighs> well, let me set the record straight. I am not jobless or a gold digger, as you might have assumed. I am a successful lawyer with a thriving career and financial independence. Is that so? And why do you think we'll believe you? You ask Abel for money every now and then. I think you are lying. No, that can be further from the truth. In fact, I contributed equally to our household expenses and even helped pay for half of the house we used to live in. I have all the legal documents to prove it. But more importantly, despite the recent events, I want you to know that we have a loving and healthy marriage. We're happy together. Yes, we faced financial challenges, but our relationship was built on love and mutual support. Are you saying that you have a successful career? Honey, you're so delusional. Oh, is it me who's delusional? Or is you guys who are running away from the police? Their faces turned pale, realization dawning upon them. The comfortable mask they wore had shattered, revealing their true nature. The weight of their actions began to weigh heavily on their conscience as they faced the impending consequences of their deeds. Well, what nonsense are you talking about? Well, let me tell you something else. I discovered your little scam and I've reported it to the authorities. You're not victims. You're criminals who have deceived and swindled countless people out of their hard-earned money. What? That's preposterous! How dare you accuse us of such things? Oh, it's not just an accusation. The evidence is overwhelming. The police are actively searching for you and it's only a matter of time before you're caught. This can't be happening. We're respected members of the society. Respected members? Cheating innocent people out of their money is anything but respectable. You thought you could get away with it, but justice will prevail. The law will catch up to you, and you'll face the consequences of your actions. This is outrageous! How could you betray us like this? We are your husband's parents! You betrayed me, first, by tricking to kick me out of my own house. And now, so many innocent people. I'll not stand idly by and watch you harm more innocent lives. The truth will prevail, and you will be held accountable for your crimes. But it was because of a misunderstanding. We thought you were a bad influence on our son. Yes, correct. I also think you are a bad influence on our lives, and I made sure to report it to the authorities. Ooh, what? You're bluffing! No, I'm not. You're not victims. You're criminals who have cheated hundreds of people out of their hard-earned money. The police are after you, and it's only a matter of time before they catch up. This can't be happening. Just as our conversation reached its peak, a knock on my door interrupted us. 
I opened the door to find police officers standing there, ready to take my in-laws into custody. They had been tirelessly tracking them down for months, and they were grateful that I had tipped them off. Are these the individuals you reported? Yes, officers. These are the ones. The police officers wasted no time. They swiftly handcuffed my in-laws and read them their rights, their faces turning pale with the realizations that their actions had finally caught up with them. We've been after them for quite some time. Thank you for your cooperation. Your tip-off has helped us bring these criminals to justice. You're welcome, officers. I couldn't stand by while they continue to harm innocent people. It's good to see justice being served. With my in-laws now in police custody, I felt a sense of relief. The deception had been exposed, and they would now face the consequences of their actions. The police officers expressed their gratitude once more before escorting my in-laws away. Later that day, when Abel, my husband, returned from work, I knew it was time to share the whole story with him. I laid out the details of his parents' financial misdeeds, not holding back any information. To my relief, Abel stood by my side, understanding the depth of their betrayal and the need of consequences. We'll get through this together. Lastly, I was actually grateful that our home now belongs to us and no one can invade our privacy once again. Our once peaceful life is back on track, with his parents serving for their actions. <laughs>